Our subject today is power amplifiers and the regulation of their power supplies. Man, does that sound technical, right? <laughs> I'll do my best to make this kind of simple and, and not too technical. <clears throat> it's from um, Prasad in India. Uh, here in India, we don't get this chance, as very few of us mortals get to see PS Audio and equivalent stuff in their life. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we do sell products in India, but I understand. It, it's, it's, that's a tough schlog. Big country, there isn't stores on, on corners and stuff, but... Thank you for watching the videos, and I do appreciate your, your questions. So, Prasad wants to know um, why most power amp designs uh, don't use regulated power supplies. Uh, I know it'll add the parts count and increase the number of failures in company points of view, but uh, it has, has someone risked it once? Uh, thanks, Prasad. Down the road, Sanders Electrostats uh, I think he makes a, <clears throat> excuse me, a power amplifier with regulated uh, rails and voltages. But most manufacturers, including us, don't regulate the power supply rails. So before I tell you why we don't do it and, and, and kind of answer your question, let me explain what we're talking about because not everybody knows. So. An amplifier, whether it be a preamplifier or a power amplifier, whatever it may be, is really nothing more than a valve connected to a big DC power supply. And imagine that power supply as a battery. Take a big battery, hook up to a valve, your music goes in and that valve turns more or less of that battery voltage into the loudspeaker. That's all a power amp is, is a means of modulating a power supply. Okay, that makes sense? So we need energy to drive speakers. If you have a speaker driver, it's nothing more than a magnet with a coil of wire going into what's called the gap. And that coil of wire is wrapped around the driver, with the driver just being the cone and as you apply energy into that coil of wire, it makes a magnetic field, which is then repulsed uh, or uh, attracted to the big magnet on the back of the driver. It takes energy to do that. Where does that energy come from? It comes from the power supply of the power amp through a valve, and the valve is controlled from the music from our preamplifier. So let's just stick to power amps for the moment. Okay, so now that we know that these amplifiers are merely valves modulating power supplies, let's look to the power supply. The average power supply for a power amplifier is nothing more than a big ass transformer, which is a hunk of iron wrapped with coils of copper. Okay, and it transforms, as we talked yesterday, the voltage, the AC voltage from the wall, let's call it 120 volts, into something usable by the amplifier. It's still at this point, it's AC. Let's call that voltage 100 volts. Now we're going to run it through a diode bridge, which is just these little parts that, that are one-way gates, so that a plus voltage goes through this diode, but if negative voltage tries to go through, it's blocked. So we only get positive, and then if we flip the diode over, we only get negative, right? So now we have separated this AC voltage, which remember is a sine wave going positive and negative, positive and negative, 60 times a second. And we've now separated it into little blips that are positive blips and little blips that are negative blips, right? And we're still kind of moving voltage, moving every 60 times a second. If we take capacitors, energy storage devices, and we connect that up to the output of that diode bridge, then all of a sudden, 
every time a blip comes up, that blip charges the capacitor, and as the blip of voltage goes down, the capacitor maintains its charge. It stays high like a battery. So what we'd wind up doing is we make a steady DC voltage, and that steady DC voltage becomes our power supply. So that is, in most amplifiers, all you get. Power transformer, diode bridge, capacitor bank, and that's it. Now for the input stage, we, we regulate it, we make it all clean and pretty and all that, but for the output stage where you have all your power, generally, that's it. You have those three elements and it looks pretty ugly. And if the wall voltage moves, let's say that our 120 becomes 122, or we start drawing current and it goes down to 108 or, or 110 or 112, the, this 100 volts we're depending on to drive our amplifier, it goes down with it too. So one way around that is to regulate the voltage, which is what Prasad from India is asking, why don't we do that? Well, here's the problem. Voltage regulators take energy to run. And when you're trying to build a 500 watt, 200 watt, 100 watt per channel amplifier, you are drawing a lot of energy. And in essence, you have to have almost another, I don't want to say another power amplifier to regulate the voltage, but you're going to dissipate a lot of heat with the devices that you use to regulate that voltage. So the way a regulator works is it's generally in a simple regulator, which we would call a series regulator, you have a transistor. And on one side of the transistor, on the input side of the transistor, you have the, your kind of your uh, moving chunky voltage. And that's always going to be at, let's say, if we want 100 volts at the output, we're going to give it 120 volts on the input. So we have some wiggle room, right? If that voltage goes up and down, we never want to drop below 100 because regulators can't make voltage. They can only regulate voltage down. So I, I hope that makes sense. I don't want to get too technical here. So when we have a higher voltage on the input, the, the controlling aspects of the transistor say, well, you know, here's my reference. I want 100 volts. So as long as I have more volts going in, I can have steady volts going out. And that's essentially how a regulator works. But the difference in voltage between 120 and 100 or 110, whatever it is, that is converted into heat when you draw current. And it can be a lot of heat. Therefore, you have to have far more heat sinks. You have to have a bigger chassis, you actually have to somehow uh, provide that power, which is through a transformer, you need a bigger transformer. So yes, it can be done. Yes, we amp designers would love it, but it becomes rather impractical. So what we do as an alternative, and this is where we get away with this from a sonic standpoint without losing much in the way of performance, we regulate the input voltage gain stage. There, we're not consuming a lot of power, so we can, we can have a higher voltage going in and regulate it without causing a bunch of heat, and that's where you get most of the sonic benefits. So by regulating the input voltage stage and unregulating the output stage, we get the best of both worlds. Sorry that was so technical. I hope it helped your understanding, and thank you for the question. Whew. Do it again tomorrow. All right. Bye.